hello everyone and welcome to the channel recently i got a comment on one of my previous video where somebody asked that what are the challenges that they are going to face if they are willing to start their career after 30s uh, as a phd scholar so i thought of making a video where i can talk about this in detail so this video is going to be about uh, if you are planning to start your career as a phd scholar as a research scholar and want to enroll into phd after 28 years of your age uh 28 29 30 and and above that so what are the challenges that you are going to face and how you are going to tackle them what are the alternatives of it so that's what this video is going to be all about uh the focus will be specifically for demographic region of india because we have different age limits for different things different rules and that's why we'll be talking about that also this video is going to be separated and will be talking about both male and female candidates because the age limits and the other rules and the limits or uh, and the other things are separate for male and female candidates so we'll take that into consideration okay first of all before digging into it let me tell you that these information whatever i'm going to share is a very generalized experience uh, it might be different for person specific but still like whatever I'm trying to tell you is based upon my own experience based upon what I have seen around me and the general perspective which we have around us okay in the research community so considering that we'll talk about the things okay so let's start that why somebody will start their PhD career or want to do research or want to join as a research scholar in their 30s first and the most common reason is career change when somebody is already doing some job mostly in industries and now they want to switch their career to research this is very commonly seen that they uh, like they have like four or five years of uh, industry uh, experience but now they don't want to further go in industry so that they want to switch to academia for that of course research is needed phd is needed so they switch that and they, for that they need phd so that's why they join a little late okay the second thing and the second reason could be based upon your personal reasons maybe that the person has started their whole education a little late or there could be some life event between the, the career and because of that everything got delayed okay so these are the two major reasons for which people generally start uh, especially like for girls like marriages and all the these events take some part of their academic career and that gives a gap in their career and for that sake they try to resume their academic or this phd journey a little late let's talk about that what are the things that you will have as a plus uh, when you start like as an advantage when you start little late okay the first thing is now because you have a clarity because you are taking this decision at a particular uh, age and you might have thought already a lot about it okay then only you are going for it unlike somebody who has just passed their masters in their 23 or 22 year of age and they are switching to phd and uh, thinking of uh, like for them it's just one of the option and after joining phd they get confused that whether i should i should continue research or i should switch to industry so they have a lot of confusion but because you have already made a decision you are having that conviction now okay so you have clarity of thoughts you are like and that's why you will be more focused towards your studies okay you will be more focused towards your research and you will not be getting that uh, you know bound back thoughts which usually uh, students get usually phd scholars get that is it was it right for me to start a phd or was it right for decision of me to enroll as a phd scholar so you must not be having that because you have already uh, taken that decision after a lot of thought okay the second advantage which you have is your confidence okay because you have already uh been into industry or something i'm talking about those who are switching from industry so you have a lot of experience uh, on uh, like talking to people or uh, how to communicate your things well and that will reflect in your research so in research communication is very important so you have already attended a lot of meetings a lot of seminars and all the things during your uh, industry job so you can take or you can bring that experience over here and third thing is again the experience which you are bringing from the industry job those who are coming from a gap of their uh, like uh, career or gap of their academic career they also because they are uh, like they are at a certain age they do not fear about speaking out things okay if you just exclude the very basic introvert nature of the person in general person is more confident in speaking out or throwing about their ideas to the uh, to the uh, pi or to the committee and that becomes a, a plus or as an advantage for you 
okay let's talk about what are the things the disadvantages which you are going to have see in india we have a age limit for jrf you already know it's a 28 years of age limit which has been increased to 30 uh, because of the covid year and because of the loss or because of the uh, like academic gap which many of the students have got during the covid years so that's why the age limit has been extended to 30 but in general we have this 28 to 30 as the age limit so that means that when you are planning or when you are resume when you are planning to start your career after 30s uh, you will not be having a option like jrf as option you cannot qualify jrf and get your own fellowship i'm talking about male candidates for female candidates there is a relaxation up to 33 years of age and that's why they have that a little both a little bit more relaxed uh, time, like age limit so for that sake they can sit in the exam qualify it get jrf and then start their phd okay but for male candidates uh, especially for unreserved category the age limit is 28 to 30 years so that's one thing okay the next disadvantage which you are going to have is after your phd okay so there are a lot of things or lot of uh, opportunities which come after phd uh, for example if you want to join as a dst inspire faculty or there are other schemes from the government of india which comes post phd if you want to go in academia okay so dst inspire fellowship ramanujam fellowship so these are different different fellowships which come to uh, to build up your early career after your phd and these have a certain age limit they come up with the age limit of 32 years so if you have done your phd before 32 then only you can apply for these fellowships okay these are post phd fellowship okay so if you are someone who is thinking to go into academia and if you are starting your phd at 28 if you are taking five years to finish your phd by the time you will finish your phd you will be already 33 and in that case you won't be eligible to apply for these fellowships okay while again there is relaxation in these fellowship schemes for female candidates but for male candidates this is the age limit as of now but a lot of people a lot of researchers they are uh, like protesting for increase in the age limit uh, maybe in future we'll have extended age limit but as of now this is something which which is there okay? and you should be mindful about that the next thing is more sort of a personal challenge so a lot of people especially a male uh, they have this uh, like peer pressure from family to settle down and uh, because you are studying already you are doing research you do not have a stable job as of now so it becomes difficult to settle down uh, start your family and all uh, same goes for female candidates it, it's again difficult to manage the family if you settle down also it becomes difficult to uh, like balance both personal and professional life and uh, for that sake it is kind of a personal challenge so how to overcome about all these things okay so let's talk about that the thing is that if you are someone who has taken this decision a little late in your career and want to do phd and you you have thought of everything whatever disadvantages and all first thing is that you have to keep in mind that these things you have to face okay personal challenge is very genuine uh, the thing which you are going to face along with your younger uh, colleagues that is very common thing and that you have to be ready about it uh, next thing which you should be very careful about is choosing a lab okay so now because your time is already very crucial you are already in your early 30s or in your 30s so you should think of finishing your phd as early as possible make this thing very clear to your supervisor that you want to finish your phd as early as possible in india you can you can even finish your phd in three and a half years so if you try to finish your phd uh, like in less time that will be crucial and that will be beneficial later on right so that is one thing which is very genuine and that you can do second thing is look for different phd uh, fellowships which are available there are different relaxations for reserved categories for example for obc category there is a age uh, there is a three years of age relaxation for SCST category, there is a five year of age relaxation. For female candidates, there is a five year of re age relaxation. So if you fall under that reserved category and you get that relaxation, it's well and good. The next thing that you have to do is you have to work on your skills. Okay, you cannot take a lot of time to uh, like just sit and read things, but try to because for you time is very crucial. So whatever uh, the other person is trying to achieve in a year, you have to try to finish that within eight months. Okay. So try to learn more skills and include them in your CV that is going to be very beneficial for you after you finish your PhD not only for you it's for everyone that's 
skill building is something which is more important than you know than publishing and other things publishing and other things comes also they are also important but skill building is highly highly important okay so try to focus on that uh, the next thing is talk to your family and talk to your partner if you are already married about the timeline and about the challenges that you are facing and hopefully they will understand about it and that will make your personal challenges a bit easier or that will be less bumpy compared to your professional things the next thing which you have to do during your phd is to make more and more networking try to uh, meet more people try to uh, attend more seminar try to attend more workshops talk to people about things and you will get more perspective about it you will have better networking which will help you after you finish your phd here i want to share a story uh, from my phd experience so we had a colleague uh, who joined along with us uh, in uh, when we joined our phd and he was having like 6 to 7 years of industry experience he wanted to do phd to improve his skills to get uh, a degree and these were the like he wanted to switch his career and he finished his phd within uh, 5 years 5 or 6 years but uh, that is including the covid year of course we were in that part but yeah he is doing well in his career uh, he made a lot of networking during his phd and that has helped him post phd so yeah these are people who are doing good and uh, understand this doing phd late is of course challenging uh, there is no like doubt about it but it's not a barrier okay and it's very person specific every person has their own story they have their own challenges and their own reasons of doing things so understand that age is a factor but it's not a barrier of course in your 30s you are bringing more maturity you are bringing more clarity to your goals and you are bringing more focus towards your goals right so the key is uh, to be persistent to be patient about it and uh, to be passionate about your goals so i hope that this video was useful for you do let me know if you have any other queries regarding it i'll try to answer you in the comment section itself if you guys have any other video requests or you want me to make video on a particular topic do let me know in the comment section below i'll try to cover that in my upcoming videos that's it from my side for this particular video thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in the next one till then have a great day bye bye take care